Hello and welcome back to Management 101. I am your host, Max Wenneker. Thank you for joining me today. Today's episode is going to be about one of the harder topics in management and leadership, which is firing an employee. And we'll talk through the why of firing an employee, when to do it, how to go about doing it. I want to start by just mentioning I'm not an HR professional. I definitely don't have all the answers in terms of how to do this in the most legally correct and company protective appropriate ways. So I'll caveat everything I'm saying by that. And this is meant to be more of a guide rather than do these specific things. And I certainly recommend if you are in the position of having to fire someone, consulting your HR team before doing so. That caveat out of the way, let's talk about why you might end up firing someone. I think there are a, a few reasons that it makes sense to end up terminating an, an employee. The common ones I have found are, of course, performance related. They're simply not doing the job that you asked of them. It can also be culture fit related. They are maybe doing what they're supposed to do, but they are not fitting in with the way that the company works and they're not responding to your feedback about it. One of the terms that we had at Uber was brilliant jerk. And we had a tenet of our company culture, which was to not have those within the company. Brilliant jerks are the people I just described. They're the ones who do a really good job, but upset a lot of others in the process or don't work well with others. And then another reason, of course, is if they violate, if an employee violates some policy in the employee handbook, does something unethical, does something illegal. All these are good reasons for firing someone. And we'll get into a little bit more of the, what does it take to get to that point before you actually decide to fire someone later on? When should you be firing someone? So this is a, this is a little bit of a longer conversation for me. Employees fall into one of two buckets when it comes to considering termination. One is where they've done something egregious. So for instance, if they have stolen money from the company, but one of my previous companies, we had someone who was sending all of the new customer referral payments to themselves. That was an egregious violation of company policy and an incredibly unethical thing to do. He was fired immediately. And I think that was absolutely the right decision. You could think of any, a number of other examples that if someone commits an egregious violation of a company policy or does something unethical, really shouldn't be any two ways about it. They need to be let go. When it comes to performance and culture related issues, I think it's a slightly longer process. We had a discussion a few months back around managing low performers, and this definitely is a offshoot of that. When someone is not meeting the performance criteria for their role, I don't think that it necessarily means they should immediately be fired. There are a few problems with simply terminating an employee if they're not doing a good job. One, you spent a lot of time and money hiring and training that employee. You lose all of that when you let them go. And if there is the opportunity to have them improve, that will often take less work and less time and money than letting them go and bringing someone else new on who you have to start from scratch and who, of course, there is some risk of also not performing well because no interview process is perfect. My general theory around letting someone go related to performance issues or culture fit issues is that should only be done once it has been determined with reasonable confidence that they are not going to be improving or the amount of work required to have them improve in this area is not worth investing. Thinking through an example. In one of my early managerial roles, I inherited a team that was hired by another person. And that team was a team of two people. Neither of them were high performers, but they'd also never had a true manager before in the company. So the person who had hired them was much more senior than them. They'd been left on an island to do their own thing. And it was going okay, but not great. They were not high performers by any means. And I inherited them onto my team. Now, I, as a manager, got more involved. And over the course of working with them, I discovered that 
neither of them was a high performer, but they were doing critical roles. And I certainly had no idea how to find replacements for them or even really understood all that they were doing. My first step was to understand their roles and understand what should be expected of them and also understand what expectations had been established for them from the beginning. In discussing with them what their expectations were, I realized that no one had ever set any expectations for them. They were coming in and doing what they thought they were supposed to be doing, but not because anyone had said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And no one had set cultural norms or expectations for them either. So they were both operating in ways that were counter to the way the rest of the organization worked. This company that I worked for at the time had an incredibly collaborative and non-hierarchical culture. You would have meetings that included very entry-level people as well as very senior people. Both of these individuals always sought many levels of approval above them before being willing to execute on the work they were doing. And this is both very slow and very unnecessary. It was also just totally counter to the way that we operated. This company was also a very collaborative one where we had a lot of different functions who worked together on the same projects. And these two did a very poor job of that. They would neglect to include all the right stakeholders. They would make decisions that would upset stakeholders without checking with their manager. And I know that that sounds counterintuitive when talking about how they often would check with many levels senior to them about certain work. Well, on other work, they were just running roughshod. From a outside perspective, it might have looked like maybe we should not be employing neither of these people anymore. At that point, it was probably not fair to simply let them go. The reason is because they never had a manager before. The person who had hired them, again, was not actually managing them at all. And so these two had just been left adrift and the company hoped that they would perform well and they didn't. I sat down with each of them and I laid out the expectations for the role. I said, in order to be successful in your role, these are the five things that need to be done well. One of them was, of course, related to the work. Another was related to stakeholder management. Another was related to, I'll call it culturally appropriate behavior. And I said, all three of these are areas where I have received concerning feedback or observed examples where what you did was counter to what the expectation is in this role. And I said, over the period of the next two months, I will work with you on a weekly basis to review how things are going in each of these areas. It is my job to help get you to the right point such that you are being positively impactful in the organization and you are successful. And then over the course of those eight weeks or so, we met once, maybe twice, sometimes three times a week to talk through, here's what's happened over the past week or since we last met, here's what went well, here's what didn't. We talked through scenarios of, okay, this didn't go well. Why do you think that is? What do you think caused that to not go well? What do you think could have been improved? If we're looking for this outcome, what do we need to do differently to get there? I really tried to involve them in the process of getting to the right point. And I gave very direct, but very caring feedback saying, here is where we need to get to. And I, as your manager, am here to help you get there, your success is my success. I really tried to frame it as we were going to work on this together. After about a month, one of the individuals was showing significant improvement in the work as well as in the stakeholder management, but was showing absolutely no improvement in their culturally inappropriate behavior. This individual was making inappropriate comments, making people uncomfortable with what she was saying. Despite improvement in the other areas, this was not changing. And I felt as though I was giving pretty direct feedback on it. I would call out these examples and say, I'm not stating that you would be made to feel uncomfortable if someone that said this to you, 
but I am telling you that it is making other people uncomfortable. And because that's the case, it needs to stop. Unfortunately, that part never improved. I decided after a month that we were just going to focus on that area, the area that was still hurting her ability to be successful. We focused just on that, we gave it another two weeks of very specific examples repeatedly being brought to her attention and unfortunately still didn't see improvement. At this point, the question became, is the steady state acceptable? It was no longer, can I help this person improve? That was definitely the first priority. I had done all that I could and spent a significant amount of time with her and found that while she did improve in certain areas, she did not improve in this one area. So I doubled down, tried to give her the benefit of the doubt that simply with more coaching and more checkpoints and more feedback, she would be able to shift this behavior. And unfortunately, that was not the case. The question stopped being, can this improve? I think the answer was definitively no. The question became, is this okay? And the answer was definitively no. And at that point, after approximately six weeks of working through this performance improvement plan, that is when I decided along with input from HR, as well as my own manager, that we would terminate this employee. The other individual after approximately one month was still not improving in any of the areas that we had identified to him as being necessary in order to be successful in his role. He was still not effectively stakeholder managing. His work product was very poor. And if I'm remembering correctly, he also moved quite slowly. And the company I was at at the time was not one where you could move slowly and be successful. His direct manager and I were both meeting with him quite regularly. After a month, we sat down and we said, okay, this is clearly not improving. We're not sure what else we can do to help this individual succeed. We stopped asking ourselves at that point, can this individual improve? They're a cultural fit for the most part. This person was not making inappropriate comments or doing things that were borderline inappropriate as the other person on the team was. He was well liked by the team. He just wasn't doing a good job. We decided after a month that he probably was not going to. Now the question became, do we let him go? Or is there another role for him in the company that better suits his skills? I think the reason that it's important to ask that question when someone's performance is bad, but they are overall a good fit for the company is it is always easier to put someone you already know in the right spot than to hire someone from outside. Just think about how long an interview process takes. Think about the risks that come with an interview process. It's very easy to think you have a good candidate and hire them and they end up being terrible for some reason. Interview processes are imperfect. In this case, we first asked ourselves, what are the things that this employee is good at? We came up with a list. And then we said, are there roles in the company where just these skills are required? We asked other senior leaders for input. We came to the realization that unfortunately there was not a role at the company, at least at that time, that would have been a good fit for him. All the roles required other skills that he had demonstrated an inability to develop in. At that point we decided, well, he's not doing a good job in his current role. We don't see an opportunity for him in another role. We need to let him go. So we also terminated that employee. Now you might be sitting here wondering, well, didn't you just tell me that you fired both of those employees anyway? So you spent six weeks of your time and other managers time and the company's resources dedicated to improving people who didn't improve. The answer is absolutely yes. They share a different story that was more of a success. In one of my teams, I had a person who became a manager on my team. She had not managed before. And as part of her growth, she had identified that she really wanted to become a manager and there was the opportunity to do so. She had performed really well as an individual contributor. And I thought it made sense to try her out as a manager with a small team. Fortunately, that didn't go very well. Uh, 
she had a very particular style of communicating that resulted in the team feeling like they were constantly on edge. They were worried about when she would be unhappy with their work. They were not made to feel comfortable. They were not made to feel like they were being listened to by her. It was unfortunately just a bad managerial fit. We sat down and at first, very informally, I asked, how do you feel it's going with your team? And she said, pretty well, they're all doing good work. I get the sense that some of them may not be super happy with me as a manager. It was a good opportunity right there to say, I have been getting similar feedback. I definitely know you have the best of intentions and I want to help you be successful. We made a plan. I said, here are the areas that I'm getting a lot of feedback on from your team. Let's brainstorm together on things we could do to help those things go better. And we came up with a plan. She wasn't super excited about implementing it because I think all of these things were outside her comfort zone, which is part of the problem. Unfortunately, it didn't go well. We tried multiple rounds of more feedback around those examples and attempts to shift the approach based on those examples wasn't working. The team continued to be unhappy. And also she was unhappy because she felt like she wasn't being successful. We probably spent two to three months trying to help this situation get better. It was clear to me at least that she really wanted to get better, which was great. She also did exceptional work prior to being a manager. And even in her role as a manager, was still delivering her own projects and delivering them very effectively. This was incredibly impactful work. Stakeholders loved her. Senior leaders loved her. It's just her direct reports didn't love her. We sat down. We had that same conversation, me and my manager at the time. And we said, clearly, she's not cutting it as a manager. We have invested the amount of resources we believe we can in helping her be a better manager, and it hasn't gone well. What do we do? In that case, instead of just letting her go, we did the same exercise of trying to identify, are there other areas in the company, are there other roles that this person could be a, a more effective in that don't require the skills that she doesn't have related to people management, but do require the things she's really good at related to project management, execution, stakeholder management? And the answer was absolutely. There are so many roles, even within my own team, where she can be really effective without being held back by some of the areas that she clearly just wasn't capable of developing into. Came up with a plan alongside her where we said, this managerial experiment unfortunately did not work. However, you are a valuable asset to the company. We want you to be successful here. We want to keep you here. We've identified an individual contributor role where you will maintain your level of seniority, but only be focused on project work instead of people management work. She was very excited about it. Her team was very excited about it. I was very excited about it because it meant we'd put all the people in the right places and my life would get easier. The team would be more impactful. So we made that change. She went on to have a very illustrious career at that company and has done exceptionally well since then. That team ended up under a manager that I think they really liked. And it was a welcome change for them. That is a lesson in just because it's not working out doesn't mean you should simply end it. We invested the time in figuring out the right fit for this employee, and she ended up having tremendous success. If we had just let her go, that would have been a big loss to the company. It is absolutely worth your time to try to help that person develop into the employee you need them to be. And only when you have determined that that is no longer possible because you've already invested all of the appropriate amount of resources in helping that person be successful, only then is it worth letting them go. All that's to say, sometimes trying to help someone improve before letting them go can pay tremendous dividends. The other thing I'll call out is if you're simply firing someone at the first sign of them not delivering, you're going to make people really scared of not delivering. You as a manager need to set up an environment where people are not afraid to fail, where they're not afraid to try things. And if you don't give them the space to fail, if you don't give them the space to try things and not be good at them, no one's going to take any risks. And a company can't grow without your employees taking risks and trying things. And people won't grow without taking risks and trying things. If you can set the expectation that 
just because you tried something and it didn't work doesn't mean we're just going to let you go. If you can set the expectation instead that we're going to let you try things, it may not work out, but we have your back and we're going to try our best to figure out the right setup for you and help you develop. Your teams are going to perform so much better because they're not going to be worried about getting fired. If they do something wrong, they're going to see these things all as learning opportunities for both them and the company. We've talked through when it might make sense to fire someone. Now the hard part, how to go about doing it. I think all terminations should happen live. Unless you're doing a mass layoff where that's simply not possible for some reason, if it is a performance related termination or if it is any other individual termination, do the human and humane thing by having a live conversation. Sometimes that won't be possible in person. In my last full-time role, I didn't work in person. None of my team worked in person. So we had to do it via Zoom. That was not ideal, but that was the best option we had. Don't make it an email. Don't make it a Slack message. Do the decent thing and have a live conversation. Unfortunately, people are afraid to have the live conversation because it does come with potential consequences. One time I fired an employee who screamed at me for not helping them more in their effort to be successful. That wouldn't have happened if it were an email or an email scream is not quite the same thing as a live scream. Firing people just sucks. And I think it's important to just have that in mind when you do it. Some other things to note about firing someone. When you do it, you should have a script prepared. That script should be vetted by someone in HR, potentially your legal team, if you have one, and you should have another person there. So it's not just the two of you. That script should include first. We have decided to terminate your employment with this company effective today. And then you also have the option of including some basic reasons why. And then you need to talk through logistics of your access to X, Y, and Z tools or programs or logins will be shut down at X time. We will send you a mailer for your laptop, or we ask that you hand back your laptop at a certain time. Also consider whether you want that person to be able to send a note to the company indicating that they're leaving. If it's an amicable split, that person is really well liked. If you think they're going to handle it professionally, it may make sense to give them the opportunity to send a quick note to their teammates. This is a big loss for everyone potentially just letting them go without allowing them to communicate can be a little bit not nice. If you think that there's a risk of them behaving unprofessionally, if there is a risk of them stealing from the company, either information or things, it may be best to simply end it there and say, we'll escort you out. I'll take your laptop here. I think it's also okay as a manager to say, look, I'm really sorry that this did not work out. I wish that it had. And I think that's true, right? At the end of the day, it's like a breakup. You want to handle it in as humane a way as possible. You don't want someone feeling unnecessarily bad during this termination. They're already going to be feeling terrible. They're going to be feeling lots of emotions. Your job there is to make it be as okay as possible while communicating the necessary information to them. To review, do it in person or at least live wherever possible. Make clear that you are terminating this person's employment. Provide some reasons why they can be quite general. Generally, HR teams and legal teams prefer to not get into too much detail around the reasons for termination. Then make clear what happens next for them. I can tell you that it's never going to be fun. I've been part of or personally fired 
many employees over the course of my career. The managers who I train on this are always nervous. Lots of tears are shed before, during, and after. It's not fun and it never will be, and that's okay. It is your job to put yourself in the shoes of the person being let go and try to make it as humane an experience as possible for them. Remember that when they leave, they're not leaving the face of the earth. You have a reputation to maintain. And I think you also just have some human decency that you owe to all of your employees who took some chance on you as a manager and your company in being there. And regardless of the reason for termination, being humane will pay dividends long-term and I think is the right thing to do. Now let's talk through mistakes people make in deciding when to fire someone. Every CEO, every manager is a human being like any other. In general, human beings don't really love making hard decisions. And firing someone is one of the hardest decisions that you have to make as a leader. I can think of countless examples where a CEO I've worked with has said, this person may not be doing what I need them to do, but I think they can get better. Or I really need someone in this role right now. Or if I just communicate this thing to them, they'll do a better job. I'm normally willing to overlook that once or twice, but as soon as they start saying things like that repeatedly about an employee, I begin to wonder if this is less about the employee's actual capabilities and more about this leader's desire to avoid firing someone. I can tell you that I have never run into a situation where a leader regretted firing someone. I've run into many situations where a leader regretted not firing someone sooner. A toxic employee has a tremendous impact on your team. A toxic employee can have a tremendous impact on your bottom line. I think if you're finding that you are having to consistently invest more time in getting someone up to baseline than you're having to invest in the performance of any other employee, they're probably not the right fit for their role. If this is happening on a repeated basis, despite many adjustments on your part, it may be time to let them go. Another good indicator is if you are constantly trying to find new types of work or new roles or new sets of responsibilities for an employee because they keep not being great at handling the previous ones, that is also an indicator that it's probably time to let them go. The other side is when managers decide to let people go too soon. I was recently working with a company where the CEO had an employee who was pretty consistently not doing good work, almost bordering on lazy, it seemed like. And the CEO and I had many discussions around what is going on here? Why can't this person just do what they're supposed to do? We feel like we've been pretty clear with them on the expectations. In fact, I had recommended to the CEO many times letting this employee go. And it seemed to me always like there was an excuse for why that person needed to stay. And none of them were all that good. And if you took a step back, you would just look at a parade of excuses over the course of many months as to why this person should keep their job. At some point, we decided to take a different approach, which was maybe the problem is not that the expectations aren't clear for them, but rather they don't know how to deliver on those expectations. We took a different approach where we said, we know this person knows what's supposed to be being done. Why don't we check on how they're actually executing on their work? As soon as we did that, we realized that this person lacked the organizing tools that they needed in order to do even the most basic things. This person was in charge of a number of really important and complex customer related processes, and they had literally no documentation showing how to perform those processes. Every time they were having to 
execute on one of these important customer related processes, they were literally doing it from scratch and having to remember all the steps in their brain. And as smart as this person was, it obviously took more cognitive load to remember all those steps than to just read from a piece of paper where they'd written the steps. When we discovered this problem, we then shifted our focus of work with this individual to let's document all of the things you're supposed to be doing and let's get them into a place where a five-year-old would understand how this process works. As soon as we did that, together we identified a bunch of major problems in these processes where this individual, he would have to record information in multiple places or communicate information to a bunch of different parties, or there would be no checkpoint to say, did we get a response from this third party? There are a lot of points at which the process could simply fail through no fault of this individual. Once we started documenting these processes, we noticed these holes, and then we were able to build in checkpoints, build in audits to the work that he was doing. And almost not overnight, overnight is a big exaggeration. Even just in a couple weeks, we started seeing more consistent follow-up with these customers. We started seeing a lot fewer holes popping up, dissatisfied customers writing in saying, I don't know what's next. And us realizing, oh, this person's been stuck in this stage two of onboarding for weeks and we didn't notice. Suddenly when we showed this person how to do their work, they were getting really good at it. They were improving their speed a lot. They were reducing their errors and they had a ton of ideas of how to improve all these processes that they were working on. I have to give credit to the CEO. He, I think probably for the wrong reasons, wanted to keep this person or didn't want to fire them. However, he was also willing to try to help figure out what it might take to make this person successful and after a bunch of trying one way, we decided to try another way. Instead of focusing on the what, we focused on the how. And suddenly this employee was doing a great job. There's definitely such thing as firing an employee too soon. The company would have been fine. They would have found someone. But helping this individual get to where they needed to be took a lot less work. In reality, it took an extra two months of time. It would have easily taken that long to search for another employee, let alone onboard them, get them all of the tribal knowledge that this individual already had, and also hope that they were going to be good at their job, which was of course a risk. Because this CEO chose not to let this employee go and because he and I together were able to figure out there's another way to approach this problem, we ended up with a very high performing employee rather than having to fire them. Firing someone is not just the act of doing so, but dealing with the aftermath of that termination in a few different aspects. You're going to need to figure out what you're communicating to the team and when. You're going to need to figure out contingency plans for what happens with that individual's work, what happens with that individual's direct reports, if they have any. All these things need to be figured out before the termination because the problems may only just begin when you terminate that employee if you haven't figured out these other things. Let's start with the communication with the rest of the organization. One of the things I've seen leaders do very consistently in early stage startups when they haven't experienced terminating a lot of people and haven't experienced managing large orgs is they'll just let the person go. And then it'll be business as usual. They won't say anything to the rest of the company or they'll kind of mention it offhand at the next team meeting. That is a bad choice. What you will find if you manage people for long enough is two things. One, people are smart and they will figure things out even if you don't tell them those things. And two, in the absence of information, people will fill the gaps oftentimes with rumors or completely fabricated information. Neither of those two things lends themselves to you not communicating proactively. When you decide to let someone go, the immediate next step within minutes is putting an emergency meeting on 
that individual's circle of employees around them. So peers and direct reports and explaining to them, we let this person go. Unfortunately, they were not a good fit for this company. We wish them the best of luck. This in no way means anything related to anyone else's performance on the team. If there are concerns related to your performance, you would be communicated those and given plenty of opportunity to improve on them before we ever take an action like this. We decided to let this person go because we felt it was best for the organization. It was best for that individual to find the role that was the right fit for them. But please know that this is not connected to any of your individual performances. This is what is going to happen with this person's work. Either we have this manager taking over temporarily, or we have hired a new manager who's coming in, or we are working with the appropriate individuals to make sure that this person's work is not dropped in any way. It may be a difficult transition for a period of time, as it will be any time that you let someone go or someone leaves, but we will figure it out and we have a plan in place to do so. Then I think it's important to also offer support to potentially affected individuals. When someone is fired, that is a really scary experience for others. It's a very destabilizing experience. If a teammate of mine is fired, I will naturally wonder, am I next? Am I doing something wrong that might lead to me being terminated? It's really important to try to address that. One of the things I like to do in these team meetings is say, I have made my calendar open for the next six hours and I will send around a Zoom link. If anyone wants to talk through this because they're having a hard time with it, they're worried about what it means for them, or they just need support, I, as the manager of this team, am available to talk. And we can also chat in private if you do not wish to join a more public Zoom. Offer those resources of support to your team such that they feel like there is a backstop and the ground is not falling out from under them. I think you'll find for the most part, people don't actually need it. They just like to know it's there for them. They like to know that you have thought about them and that you're being there to be supportive, but there may be some individuals who are really affected. Either you as their manager should be checking in to make sure that they're okay and offering space for them to talk through it, or you should be asking their direct manager to be checking in with them. They may have a more close and trusting relationship than you do with that individual if you're more senior in the org. Handling that aftermath in terms of where is this person's work going, who might be impacted by this person's departure, either personally or professionally, and how is that all getting communicated is more important for your team's short-term performance than however you handle the termination itself. That person's gone already, but the ripple effects of not handling that departure well will impact your org for a lot longer. The last thing that I will note related to how you communicate with your organization that someone has been let go, it is totally okay for you as a leader to have a tough time with letting someone go. It is okay for that to be a stressful and anxiety inducing thing to have to do. It is okay to feel bad about it after the fact. That's all very natural. It's really important to be careful about how you communicate those feelings to the rest of your organization. I've heard this said before, and I really like it as a leader, you can't have a bad day because if you have a bad day, so will everyone else. Even if you are having a hard time with the fact that you had to let this person go, maybe you were particularly close with them, or maybe it's just really hard to fire people. That is definitely the case. Be careful about how you present that to other people. I think it's okay to say, hey, everyone, this was a very hard decision to make, but we felt it was best for the company and for the team to do it. Or it is always hard to lose someone that's part of the team. Those things are okay stay away from, I am feeling really sad, or I am having a hard time with this. 
you as the leader here, you have to make the decision. Unfortunately, you also have to be the support mechanism and the rock for the rest of the team. And so even if you are having a hard time with it, seek support elsewhere and try to maintain as even keeled a facade or exterior to your team as possible, because they're going to need that in this time of upheaval, which inevitably occurs after someone is let go. I feel like this is a topic that I could talk about forever. Every situation is a little bit different. There's definitely not a right way to handle things. There's certainly a wrong way to handle terminations and the processes leading up to them, but the options for the right way to handle things are numerous as well. However, you might be getting bored of hearing my voice for this long at this point. So I'm going to cut it off here and maybe depending on the response we get from this episode, I'll do another one. If there are certain topics that I neglected to cover or there's more a surface area to touch upon. But anyway, thanks so much for listening. I hope this was useful to all you managers out there who will one day have to be terminating an employee and wish you the best of luck. Thanks for joining. <laughs>